Even as we share from your word. Open our hearts, Lord, that we shall receive directly from you. We avail ourselves to hear at your feet. We want to stand. Be blessed, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord and welcome to church this morning. Each one of you is precious in the sight of God. And you're blessed. We are in a season where God is speaking to us concerning many things. And as you know very well, we are focusing on be strong. But before you become strong, you should know your God. And when you are strong, then you take action. So it is, know your God, be strong, and since you're strong, take action. Now, most of the things that we are sharing today are ending up into action points. And I want us to stand from the previous message we had last Sunday. I remember very well that we made a commitment. How many of you are here? Just by show of hands. And you stand up, I cannot see your hands. You just stand up. Just stand up. I'm sorry to make you stand up again. Just stand up. Okay. Thank you. We are almost half of the people that are here. But anyway, even those that were not here, today you are moving away with an action area. And next Sunday, I am trusting that the Lord will help you to work on that which you are learning today. By the way, I am inclusive. What I am sharing with you, I am also sharing with myself. We left here with a responsibility to go and witness. And we said that we are going to do it with an intention. We are going to be intentional to go out and witness to our neighbors, to our relatives, to our friends, to our workmates, to those we within our surroundings. And there could be an opportunity that you were able to go out. And you are willing to testify before us. I went out and witnessed. I went out and witnessed. And I have brought a soul this morning to the King of God. Are you there? Thank God for those for those hand claps. Are you there? And we need your testimony. Oh, you may not have witnessed and got a soul, but this morning you've come with one and say, For me, I have purpose to bring another person to the church. Do we have that kind of person? Welcome. With the person, right? Let's clap for you. There is another one who also whispered to me. Naja, either you told me you had come with somebody. You bring the person. Amen. 
I think these are the fruits we are looking for, brethren. Praise the Lord. Please, brethren, you share with us in brief. You brought these ones for getting saved, or you witnessed them and they got saved, and they, so that we can clap our hands with knowledge. Okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. I brought my granddaughter. Amanya She has been coming. She's not yet born again, but today she has come to confess. Amen. Hand clap to the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Mr. Manya Sara. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Thank you. Praise God, brethren. My name is Mutimba Brian. Okay, Manya again. Jesse. Jesse is born again. Yeah, I just requested him that I want to go with him to church on Sunday because I used to see, I've, I've just actually forgotten that he's born again. I used to see him around. I, I'm not sure whether he has been going to church, but I think he can tell us more. My name is Prophet Jesse. I'll get money again. Staying in Zambia Barracks. I've been trained in Church of Uganda in Zambia. But then Sabira Church of Uganda in Zambia. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Luigi. Don't do it. I thank God for because every time when we meet at his wife, this time as I'm standing before you, I thank God for my mom. It is my mom, you're my mom. She has not been born again. She got herself one time. Amen. She was once upon again, but when she goes on to my father's house, then she ceased to be a born again. But uh, of recent, we went for a mission with Uncle Erasmus, and uh, we picked her when she was sick. But as we brought her this way, today she has made up her mind to reconfess again. Amen. Welcome. We're happy to receive you in the name of the Lord. I want these two, Sarah and the, the mother, to win it and confess this word for the Lord. Father, I want to thank you for loving me and receiving me today in your kingdom. I come to you 
as I am with my sins and ask him Mukama mkuu wa Zorwa leo, aburuganda abageno abalopoka mudeme bidambo bino, aburuganda sara, nema mawa wii, mudeme bidambo bino kapolesa bina lopo. Mukama mkuu wa Zorwa leo, kwa mbo jaga dinyo. Siwa leo roka, na yeye ni yake jana je mazemo. Na yeye kuruwa leo sazeo, o kutoa rangi mlo kuziwa. Unga mazoku tega roka kala, o rubla mwa. Ne wajo joy, nti o mpani kiri nyani yangu kuchita wote kwa rubla mwa. Teka kama anyago, kwe kenyini ze sara ni kutu. Tadai ke nosi. Amanya ganga wani kwe kuchita wuchogula mwa. Amanya ganga wani kwe kuchita wuchogula mwa. Elane wande yu kutanika nolwa lelo. Elane wande yu kutanika nolwa lelo. O kukovera makubo kukona. O kukovera makubo. O nunga mi. Ato nyambe. O nyambe. Nsovolo kuita mwa. Nsovolo kuita mwa. Nga kukovera. Juno msabi nga yinda mwenye nye tuto kamwa. Era sitani kubano uruwa lelo. Kwe gana. Sichari uwo. Uruwa lelo sazeo. Okudeli katona. Katona nyamu. Ili umulawe wa sitani. Alemoku mpambula. Na wendo mwa mzimu. Mulinya na Yesu Kristo mkamwa. Mulinya na Yesu Yesu Kristo mkamwa. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. For these two that have entered into your kingdom. We are praying that you watch over them. You disciple them, Lord. Using these vessels that have brought them before you. That they will be strengthened in you. They will learn from you. They will walk in your way of righteousness and holiness all the days of their life. And they continue to trust in you. Teach them your word. Teach them how to pray. Lead them to fellowship that will enable them to grow. And help them even to eat next many more. That they will be able to make them disciples as well. Just like they are going to be disciples in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for bringing these people to get saved. Thank you so much for bringing the neighbor. And you're welcome to be part of this congregation. Friends, friends, God has worked through you to bring these people to get saved. It is your responsibility to nurture them and ensure that they are discipled to your level of knowing God. So you are responsible. And may the Lord help you. God bless. Amen. You can go back. 
Now, this is what we are expecting the church to continue doing. Now, just imagine if each one of us had come with a friend, with somebody interested in getting saved. With somebody you have witnessed to and has got saved. For sure, these chairs would not be enough for us. It's a challenge to you and also a challenge to me. We are sharing about knowing God, being strong and taking action. And as a local congregation, as a local congregation, we are taking action in a number of areas. One of them is in praying. And we are continuing to pray. We have started to pray every morning here at the Sunday. We have prayer and there's intercession going on. We are also taking action in evangelism, witnessing to people, which is part of what you have seen here. We are also taking in action in discipling them, which we have also committed ourselves. Don't produce a child and you don't take care of the child. And that's what we are saying, you should disciple that the new convert. We are also saying that we are going to grow in our spiritual life. And even in that area, we are taking action intentionally. In all the teachings we are getting, it is for your spiritual growth, for my spiritual growth. We are also taking action in loving God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our hearts. And that is taking action. We are also taking action in loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And that is where we are focusing this morning. Where are the areas of action that we are going to take is our question. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 57, verse 37 and 38, Jesus states the first and greatest commandment. Yes, we are As you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And he goes ahead to say in verse 39. And the second is like it. The, 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 the second commandment is like the first one. That you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, the first question we are going to ask ourselves, how do I love myself? I believe the, the answers are on your fingertips. One of the things that you do that you love yourself, you put on decently today and walked out of your house. Is that an expression of love? Of loving yourself? I believe it is. You have also loved yourself that you are mindful of the food. You feed yourself. You are sure that you eat food. And without eating food, are you sure you will be able to stand? So we are concerned about feeding. We care about ourselves as individuals. Even where we stay, 
you went to Sula. Whether you are renting or you are in your own house, you are mindful of the place where you stay. You want at least a decent place. So shelter is another important need of a human being. You are also mindful about your health. Every moment that you feel some pain somewhere, you want to run to a doctor. You, you want to get some medication. So we are also mindful about our individual health. Maybe you are also mindful about the kind of job that you do. That's source of living that you have is also important to you and me. I mean that this can go on and on and on. All these things that we have identified are your needs are my needs. And you cannot be able to get all these things by yourself. Talk about your health. Talk about your health. You cannot be a doctor to yourself. Am I right? You need to go to a doctor like one sister. And get treatment when you are sick. Because you cannot do it on yourself. When you need food, you have to go to another person to buy the food that you need. You may not be able to go in the garden to yourself to produce it. But another person meets your need by, meeting, by providing for you. Much as, you may, much as you may have money to pay, but what you need, you may not have it. So in other words, you cannot be alone as an island and think that you can stand on your own. You need to get supplies from another person. Are we together, friends? Now, since we are in need of one another, we qualify each one of us as a needy person in one way or the other. You are needy, I am needy. And our needs can only be met by other people. Now, that gives us a level of how much we love ourselves and qualify us as needy people. And because we are needy people, we need others. Now, this takes us to a scripture. Uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Can we have it on the screen? Therefore, I say to you, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, you need others to do well for you to meet your supplies, to meet your needs. The best way, according to the scripture, you would rather be the first one to meet their needs, giving them kind of like a standard, this is what you would lo I would love you to do to me. In, in, other, in other words, you take responsibility at the beginning. I would give an example. If you want to be slapped, then you slap me. And then I will also give you back a slap, right? Isn't that how ordinarily we respond? Naturally. You've done this for me, I will also do it back. And I remember very well when we were still young. 
when we would send to our neighbors place some basket full of groundnut that basket will never come back empty it will come back with some of or some other things that they do have in other words, we are saying, when we look at it from this kind of angle, it becomes easier for you and me to begin loving others or our neighbors just like we love ourselves. Let's go to Luke chapter, chapter 10. Verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, A certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Note this question very well. He's asking, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In other words, he's looking for an action. Something he can do physically. Let's go to the next one. Verse 26. He said to him, what is written in the law and what is your reading of it? Move. Yes. Interpret. The law is written in the word of God and this is what we want to understand. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Let's move forward. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this, and you will live. It is an action point. Do. Do. Love. Your neighbor as you love yourself. Let's move forward. Verse 9. But he wanting to justify himself, say to Jesus, and, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a, yes. cert a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Please, can we go back to the previous scripture? And Jesus answered and said, Now the next one. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And Note the word by chance. It was by chance. 
That tells something you can get. Use that opportunity. It was a chance for this man. And not, he was a priest. There was some godly element in him. I hope we're reflecting ourselves and looking at ourselves in a mirror. If you were that kind, how would you conduct yourself? I am very convinced beyond doubt beyond doubt that each one of us has had an opportunity of this kind of person. It may not be a robber per se. It may not be a robber per se. Or somebody who has been robbed. But somehow this person needed help, needed attention. The Bible says he was almost beaten half dead. How many of us have met accident victims? I believe all of us have met people knocked by a car, by a border, border, by a bicycle, by something. Amen. Let's go to the next scripture. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. A Levite has also some godly element in him. He did exactly the same thing and passed the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He had compassion. The Bible even does not describe him who he was apart from being a Samaritan. Somehow a certain Samaritan but he was different from the others. Let's move on. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on, an, on oil and wine and he set him on his animal brought him to an inn and took care of him. Namu sembelela, namu siba ebi wundu vye, nga afukamu amafuta, no muenge, namu sa kusoroye, namu leta mchisuro, echaba genye, namu janjava. Does this represent us in one way or the other? Chino, chirina engeri jechi. I am convinced that this Samaritan person had a mission, had where he was going, had something that he was heading for, or a place where he was going to do something, whatever it was. Just, just like you and me, when we are on journeys, it could be going to your place of work. It could be going to the village. It could even be coming here to church in the morning. Would you know what this Samaritan did? Would you be willing to be diverted from what you are aiming at and attend to this person by the roadside? Many times we have excuses. I am hurried. I have the other meeting. I have the other appointment. I am late. It's too late. The others will take care. And of course you are seeing how they are taking care by passing the other side. And we are also taking the other side. Remember, heaven is recording this. 
Do you see how it was recorded here? This man is not known, but he's being talked about. A certain Samaritan came by. And he did something unique and different. Now, we see him taking of his resources. The Bible says he bandaged him. He poured wine. He, he poured oil. He got this man and put him on his donkey, on his animal. He took care. In other words, he put in his time. The Bible is saying he took care. He set him on his animal. In other words, he got off the animal he was traveling from and put him on top as a, as a person who needed attention. Now imagine he had been beaten almost to death, which I believe he was bleeding. The fact, that, the fact that they had left him on the roadside, he must have been also darkened. But he, he didn't, didn't, but this man didn't mind the state of the man. Got him, got him with the blood on, on his animal. He put him he put him on his donkey no matter how the man was looking like do we see the sacrifice let's move forward on the next day when he departed he took out two denarius gave them to the innkeeper and said to him take care of him and whatever more you spend when I come again I will repay you. Then he returned and said, he was distracted from what he was aiming at. To attend to this stranger. Which the Bible is saying, that is your neighbor. Maybe let, before we go, let's, let's go to the next scripture. So which of these three do you think was the neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Yes, uh -huh. Next scripture. I mean, the, the, the man was very clear. The, the scripture is very clear. He who did mercy, he who responded to this man, is the one who was a neighbor. Are we together, friend? The man was traveling on a journey and met a man beaten, wounded almost to death. And the Bible is telling us that this wounded man was the neighbor to this Samaritan man. In other words, this person who was in need and had been wounded, 
was a needy person. There was an opportunity for this Samaritan, like there was an opportunity for the priest and the Levite. To meet the needs of this wounded person. But all the out of these three the Bible talks about. Two of them did not take their opportunity or use their chances well. But it is only this Samaritan man that took the opportunity and attended to this needy person. Who was there to tell this man that this man needs some attention? The Bible is clear, the man was just passing. And had an opportunity of seeing. Like you and me have opportunities of seeing. Are we mindful of using our sight to identify the needed people in our midst? Are we able to use our ears to hear and understand that so and so is in need? Are we able to take initiation as individuals to attend to the needs of these people? Are we looking at, first of all, inside the house of God? But this does not limit your service or your attention to the house of God alone. Because just like this man met robbers, another unbeliever can also meet robbers and fall into the hands of robbers. Even that one who is a non-believer needs your attention. So it is for everybody that you identify that is in need of something that needs your attention. We don't see anything here like the church or brethren were begging one another to attend to. I heard Pastor Asimus talking about some friend, uh, Pastor Kalenzi, who is sick in the hospital. It could be here, right? And we have heard, you have heard and have also heard and the Lord is watching you and me to see our attention. Whether we are going to respond like this Samaritan or we are not. It's a chance, it's an opportunity. Grab it. I should also grab it. Now, the needs do not only zero on this kind of people. Have you had an opportunity of seeing people who, when you are moving out of church, have you ever gotten a chance of moving out when I've finished service here and you find somebody standing alone outside there? If you took time and greeted that person, is it sin? TV? That person may have come here the very first time. And he's just standing by the side. And it would be very courteous to say, hello, hi, you're welcome. 
I'm happy to see you. What are your names? If you went to a church and somebody attended to you like that, how would you say? It's a service. You can give it out. And the Lord is looking for you. It could even be just like calling somebody whom you know amongst our servants. Whom even you don't know, but you have the telephone contact. Just to say, I have just called you to find out how you are. How would you feel? Wouldn't you be blessed? It could even be just sending an SMS. To that person. It is precious in the sight of God. You could even take of time to say, I have called just to pray with you. Even if you do not know the need of the person. And just inquire. We had a number of people here standing. And they said we want to be prayed for. There is an opportunity to pray for a person. And God hears every kind of prayer that we present to him. Every kind of intercession we make. God hears. God responds. Your prayer is not too small that God cannot be able to hear. It can make things to change. And you have been a blessing to that person. Now the Bible is here clear that he had a chance. And the question was, what must I do to inherit God's kingdom. That is, that is what the lawyer was looking for. And God takes him to the practical point of it. And use the scriptures. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. He gave a practical thing. About this name, about this person. Do you see that you can enter God's kingdom through an act of love and compassion? Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. From verse 31. Matthew chapter 25 verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Let's continue in Uganda. And the Bible says that the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Move on. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come ye blessed.
blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Awo kabaka aligamba abali ku mukono abali ku mukono gwe ogwadyo nti mujje mwe kitange ze yawa omukisa musikire obwa kabaka obwa batekerwa tekerwa okuva ku kutonda kwensi let's let's be attentive to this tufeyo nyo kino it is the kingdom prepared for them don't forget that then the king will say to those on the right hand side okay next verse 35 for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you took me in kubanga nali nalina enjala ne mumpa etokulya nalina enyonta ne munywesa nali mugenyi ne munsuza Let's not leave things here. Let's go back to year 36. I was hung, 35. There was hunger, which means that this person needed food. That's the which means he needed water or something to drink. He was a stranger like this person. Whom we've just read about abandoned on the road. And he needed attention. He needed to be taken in. Like this man took care and put him inside and took him to an inn. Let's move forward 36. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. The Bible talks about being in prison. And this person was visited. It talks about being sick and was visited. It talks about being naked and clothing was provided. These are the needs we are talking about. Clothing, sickness. Friends, these are real things. There is something that has always challenged me. I do not have an answer. Maybe you have it. But I just throw it to you. Recently, I lost my mother. We had all that we needed for the burial. I'm not saying that we should entertain to bury your brethren. Don't understand me badly. But the question is, what are you doing, what am I doing when this person is still with us? How much attention are we giving to this living person? After we have known we have seen, we have heard, but when the person is gone, like somebody told me a statement recently, that a saint is omoku, is a vura. The money for a day can't be lost. It will always be found by all means, even if it's in millions. And it is got within a very short time. As the center of when the person is still living, we don't see the opportunity. It's not there. Actually, at times I get moved when I see 
went to 30 riff. And each one is of them is costing about 30,000 shillings. Yes. One point five million shillings in rent. Kaka denga kamu ne chitunga kari mubi muri omo. When the person was living, nga to munto no yari achariwo. Even five thousand shillings, you are not willing to give him to him. Nga ne kumi echa no west kuri mo te te kuzimwa. I don't see this biblical. Actually, I want to say it is humanical. Let's move forward. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and gave you a drink? Move forward, 38. When, when did we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothed you? Thirty-nine. Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? When did we see you a And the king will answer and say to them, As sure as I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. And the least of these. Once you do such thing to the least person, you are doing it to the Lord. These are acts of love. Who identifies these needs? It is you and me. Because God has given you the eyes. When you see, when you hear, when you understand with your brain, nobody should come and pamper you. Please, let's do this. Let's contribute to this. Let's support so and so. Let's encourage so and so. No! No! It is your responsibility. It's my responsibility to do an act of love. And this is eternal. Do you think, friends, and heaven is not recording your things? Where are these ones coming from? If sure heaven is not recording your works, my works. Now, when you go further in that same text of chapter 25, you'll, you'll find about the gods who were put on the left hand side. And the same God seated on the throne is telling them, I was sick and you did not visit me. I was hungry and you did feed me. I was naked and you did clothe me. I was in prison, you did visit me. And then they will also ask him, when, Lord, did that one happen? And then he will, he will answer them and tell them that when you did not do it to those, any one list of those, you did not do it to me. 
kemutaso la chukolela oyo asemba yo obuto obo 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 chini masika tiga mwe then the match in kolela and you know where they will end up in everlasting fire na ye mumani jebana komentereza which means there are two categories of here of people there are those who acted on what God expected and attended to the need of people and for them was eternal kingdom eternal life then there's the other category of people who did not do those things and they were sent to eternal condemnation friends are you seeing something here we are known for we know sins of when we when we commit sin when we commit evil the wages of sin is death mada stealing kuba yadaltare mwenzi those are sins that we commit but there are also sins of omission na ye waliwo ekibiche tubusa amazi in other words when you don't do what you are supposed to do nga tokoze cho tekedwa kola before god you have sinned mu masoka katondo bo yo nonye i mean it's like if you don't get saved and you are supposed to get saved before God you have committed sin because you have not got saved you are if you don't do these acts of love surely you have sinned before God Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it is a gift of god just leave it in english you will interpret in english it is by god's grace through our faith and it's a gift from god that we are saved let's move forward verse 9 Verse 9 Not of your works let lest anyone should boast Sirwa mirimu jafe ntitulina okwegulumiza We are saying it's not of our works okay Sirwa bikola byafe Let's note that For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them Kubanga fe tuli mulimu the lord intended that once you are saved by faith through his grace and you acknowledge that salvation is a gift from god that are works that he expects you and me to walk in and those very works are prepared by him in advance that we should be able to walk in them so if we don't walk in them we are missing a mark revelation chapter 2:14 verses 12 revelation chapter 14 verse 12 
Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Are we seeing this, brethren? When you die in Christ, your works will follow you. There is what God, heaven is recording as far as your works, my works are concerned. As evidence. Like this Samaritan man was recorded. It's in the word of God. These are not my words. But also the Bible is saying those who die in Christ, they, are, they rest from the labors of their hands, yes, but their works will also follow them as evidence. Remember where we started from in verse 20, chapter 25. The Bible is saying he will come and sit on his glorious throne for judgment. He will already be having a record of what you have done. And what you will not have done. But also because you have died or I will have died also, your works will also be before before your throne. They will also be behind you as evidence. So there's double evidence. That's, that's in the Bible, two, two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. So he has records, but also your works will also come in as another evidence. To see how to walk in life. To see how to walk in life. To see how to walk in life. Identify the needs of our neighbor. And the neighbors have been described very clearly. Where you are walking and going through, you will definitely meet a neighbor. Whether you know him or you don't know him, he's a believer, he's not a believer, but you will meet somebody who is in need. And as you attend to that need of that person, heaven will record it. When you are before the throne of glory on that judgment day, that, that which heaven will have recorded will also be behind you as an act that you have done of love. Now, 
Father, thank you for this morning. You are very grateful for your love. You loved us. And so you command us to love you. A response to your love. You gave us your own son, Jesus Christ, that he may die for our sins, for us to inherit eternal life. You saw us in need. In our own way, in our own nature, we could not help ourselves. Nobody coerced you to come and help us. But within your nature, you saw us in need and responded to the need. By providing Jesus Christ. And in a similar way, you are commanding us to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. And to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And you've plainly given us a living example of who our neighbors are. And also explain it plainly how we should respond to them. Lord, we are human. Many times we act like Levites. We act like priests. Like we see in this example. But we're asking you in your divine way of working. You will work in our lives that we shall be like this good Samaritan who left whatever he was doing, used the resources you had given him as a good steward and attended to a person who was in need. This is what we want to be like. That our works may be recorded like this Samaritan man. And that our works will also follow us of this kind that they may also be recorded and evident. We can only depend upon you, Lord. Because on our own, we can do nothing. So will you help us, Lord? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.